Welcome everybody to another brand new episode of It's My Wrestling Podcast. I'm of course, as always, your host Chris Dees. Before I get started, as always, please make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube, the follow button wherever you get your audio podcasts from whatever platform you're on. Today's guest is a lady I am very, very excited to speak to. And I'm sure podcast hosts say this all the time, but when I first started doing this, she was right at the top of my list for dream guests because I have always championed women's wrestling. She's doing some incredible things within women's wrestling at the moment. Um, First burst onto our screens back in 2004 with WWE as part of the Diva Search. Um, Didn't win the Diva Search. (laughs) I hate to bring it up. Uh, Only finished fifth, but was still hired by WWE. Went on to be a really, really much loved part of the Divas division um, before going elsewhere to become TNA Knockouts champion, WWE 24-7 champion, and holds a distinction of being the only ever, the one and only, pregnant WWE champion. Um, As I said, she's doing some incredible things for women's wrestling at the moment over in Ring of Honor, revolutionising the women's division there. She's, of course, the one and only Mrs. Maria Canellis Bennett. Thank you so much, Maria, for joining me. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm sorry. That is such a mouthful of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a lot. You've done a lot. I had to try and get it all in there. I'm sure I've missed a yeah, lot. Yeah, I've done a few things here and there. Yeah, you've been in the business what, for nearly 20 years now, isn't it? 17. 17 mm-hmm. years this yeah. year. So, um, yeah, it's been a while. And it's yeah. crazy because each iteration feels like it was a different lifetime. So it's like there was the WWE time and then there was the independent wrestling time and then there was the Ring of Honor time. It just, it seems like different, completely different lives. Yeah, yeah. And a busy, busy life as well. It's just just nonstop, 17 years of constantly doing this without really taking any breaks. Obviously, you've got a busy family family life as well with kids, working with your husband as well. I, I imagine you've not really had too many chances to just sort of like step back and really look at it and sort of like take in everything that you've done it's just must just must be 100 miles an hour all the time it it is it's crazy because i feel like last year everybody with the pandemic had to take a step back and um really like look at their life and realize what was going on and um see what's happening in the world but you know at the end of the day i will always cherish that time with my family Um, you know, it was a lot of unfortunate events that all happened at once, but I am also incredibly blessed that I was able to have that time with my newborn son. And then with my husband and my daughter, she was two at the time. So yeah, I, I definitely treasure that time at home. Yeah. How old is your, your son now? He's a year and a half, but oh my gosh, he is huge. He is a big boy. (laughs) He is a bruiser too, but he loves his mama. Well, if any, uh, if any men come into the house to like work on, you know, uh, if the um, air conditioner or something needs worked on, he like gives them the evil eye. <laughs> it's going to be interesting when he gets a lot older. <laughs> my son's a bit the same. Yeah, my son, my son turned one year old in August. So only a little bit younger than than your son. Um, he's a bit of a daddy's boy, though. Doesn't really go to, to mommy very often. He comes to me more, which is fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to complain. Oh, you did it. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, speaking about your family and speaking about, about Mike there, I, I interviewed Mike last week, um, and I've got to ask, because he was so lovely and sweet about you. He's your biggest fan. He only had good things to say. Said uh-huh. that, he, you know, the first thing I asked him was, what's it like being with you all the time? Because, you, you know, for the last however many years, you've literally worked together everywhere yeah. always been on the road together obviously you've got your your kids as well so it's hard being away from them but he said he could never get sick and tired of you loves working with you you bring out the best in him is it the same the other way around or is this about to get really awkward <laughs> you like working um, with him as well i do i um i actually miss the kingdom um mm. and i at first, I, especially after having kids, I was like, oh, there's there's no way I'd ever want to go back to that time of my life. Or, But yeah. I miss that time of working together in the kingdom. It was such a cohesive unit. Um, now we work together um, in the same company, but we are on totally different paths. So sometimes during those TV days, we barely see each other. 
Um, Mike is one of the producers for the women's division. So if I do talk to him throughout the day, it's, Hey, can you get with whoever and make sure this, this, and this is happening? It's not really in the setting of we're doing it together. Um, so that part of it, I, I didn't realize I'd miss it, but I definitely miss that part. Um, but he's my best friend and I know that sounds very mushy, but for me, it's always been friendship first. You have to like the person, especially in the past year with the pandemic and everybody's crammed in their house together. You have to like each other. Like, you know, we we agree on most things, but even the things that we don't agree on, we, we talk about it. We um, have conversations about what direction we want to go as a family. Um, it's never a, no, you can't do that. It's always a, let's see if we can work it out. Um, you know, and that I think makes us work really well together. And if there's different parts of our um, creativity we want to explore, we do that as well. I mean, Mike has done a tremendous job of totally recreating what style of wrestler he is. I mean, I don't even recognize him in the ring anymore. And like, and I was so close to the wrestling for so long with him in ring of honor the first time around that there were things that I didn't like. And I would tell him about, you know, I, I, I want this to be faster or I want, you know, you should try more explosive moves or, you know, you should try this or blah, blah, blah. And he was very hesitant the first time we were in ring of honor together, but now everything is like, yes, I will try that. Yes, I will try that. And I will watch matches now and be surprised and be like, I didn't know you could do that. Like, <laughs> so he has really um, fallen in love with the wrestling part of wrestling. And I don't know if it's been these matches with Jonathan Gresham or if it's just been the peer division or what it is that has sparked this new creativity, but I love it. I, and I don't want to know anything about the matches. Like he always is like, Oh, it's going to go this way or that way or whatever. And I'm like, I, I don't want to know. I just want to watch and I want to enjoy it as your wife now. Um, so that that's very cool for me. And, um, I can't wait to see what he does. There's so many things happening in the wrestling world right now. Punk came back and we got Daniel Bryan and we've got it, all these things are happening. And when the dust settles, there's going to be such a cool group of just pure wrestlers. Yeah. And so I'm excited for that point. I know everybody loves the, the comebacks and all this, but I can't wait for the one-upsmanship. That is going to be fun. Yeah, that's what's so good about Ring of Honor. I love the Pure Division. Everything they did there with the Pure Tournament when Ring of Honor came back, incredible. Um, and me and Mike spoke about that a lot, and he he actually opened my eyes to a few things because I didn't realize just how involved you are with the women. I, I knew, obviously, you'd gone to Ring of Honor to do some things with the women. I didn't mm -hmm. realize you were actually like part of the creative and part of the booking and basically in charge of the yeah. How did that come about? Is that what you knew you were going there to do, or was it sort of like proposed yeah. she, she went back so i knew that i was going to be in charge of the women's division um we we call me a producer there um but what that really entails is like everything from booking to producing to watching the matches back to getting the matches ready for television to um you know storylines and you know what direction are we going who's the new talent that we're bringing in i'm constantly receiving emails from talent and um i feel bad because i can't get everybody on a show right now, but I see them all. And there are so many fantastic talents I'd like to bring in, but it's the wrong time. And for the first time in my life, I'm really realizing what that means with timing. It's like, you know, you've, you've got all these people. And I use this example with um, Mike the other day. It's like, you've got all these people with such tremendous talent and their talent is going up, 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 up. And they're waiting for the timing to meet because it's, it's got to be the most talented person at the right time. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, as soon as ring and ring of honor and myself decided this was the position I was going to have, I started watching every bit of women's wrestling footage I could find. And luckily we've got beyond wrestling. We've got reality of wrestling. We've got all the, the Texas wrestling we've got, uh, it's, warrior wrestling we and now pwg is back and all these different and of course gcw is back or gcw is out there so it's like we have so much to work with 
And it was narrowing that down. And then, of course, there's the conflicts of, can I schedule this person? They're doing this. So there was a lot of that. Um, and you haven't seen everybody yet. And that's the cool part is like we we have tapings coming up. We've got a few new faces that are coming in for those tapings. Um, beginning of next year, we've got more new faces that are coming in. Um, and they're going to rotate in and out. And then there's going to be the core group of, um, ring of honor wrestlers that are there. And to be on that core group, that's the team. And, you know, whether or not they like each other or don't like each other or whatever, everybody is fighting for the team. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. And I've spoken to quite a lot of of ring of honor talent guys and girls who've all said the same thing. You've got a really not a small roster. I think you've got like the right size roster. You haven't got too many. You don't have too few so that we're always seeing the same people involved. But, yeah. it, but it does feel like a family. Everybody's looking out for each other. Everybody's got each other's backs. Everybody wants the best for each other because you all want the best for Ring of Honor. It doesn't feel like anybody's sort of trying to, you know what I mean, sort of like one-up each other yeah. to take their place. It feels like yeah. you're all just trying to push, push each other up. I think the tournament did a great job of that as well, the women's tournament. Yeah, I mean, we definitely had some brand new faces to Ring of Honor that um, they really shined. And it's tough when you don't have a crowd out there and to go out there and put on your best performance. That's a tough situation to be in. But when you're in a locker room like Ring of Honor, where everybody is putting on their very best matches, no matter if there's nobody in the crowd or a thousand people in the crowd, um, it really helps. And women were coming back and it was, you know, guys were waiting at the curtain to tell them, you know, congratulations, or that was a great job, or I love that match or blah, blah. So that's the atmosphere that is cultivated there. And that's the atmosphere that I think people really crave um, when they come to Ring of Honor. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm probably going to answer my own question here because I think Roxy is awesome. But why why did you make that decision for her to be the champion? For her to win the uh, the that's the thing. It's like, I, I, I booked the people in the tournament. They booked who were going to win. Oh, and okay. um, through their talent, through their matches, um, you know, Roxy really shined. To beat two Ring of Honor veterans, to beat a seven-time women's champion, to beat someone like Sumi, who's been in this industry for over 20 years, to be able to do that um, and to look good doing it, look solid like she belonged, um, it, she deserved it. And um, But Miranda deserved it as well. It just wasn't her night that night. And I don't know if it was because Roxy had those experiences going into that finals that gave her the confidence to be able to stand her ground. And even though... Rock was down for most of the match. I mean, I was sitting ringside and I was like, there's no way she's going to be able to pull this out because Rock was down for most of the match. But then by the end, she was able to build that momentum back up. Um, But Miranda looked good that night. And I, you know, it could have gone either way. And the girls were really both solid. And a lot of people are saying it's the best women's match of the year. Um, I would have to agree. Yeah, I would put it up there in the top three, at least. Yeah, yeah. The women have really stepped it up, obviously, in the last few years and certainly this year. But no, I'd have to agree 100 percent, not just because I'm a big Ring of Honor fan, but genuinely it was two great performers. Both women would have been worthy winners Mm -hmm. as well, which just goes to show the strength of of not just the tournament, but the division. It's great to see it was it was it was tough to see women I wouldn't say not not getting the chance, but to not have a champion for such a long time and to not have somebody really, you know, sort of um, leading the division. And I, mm. I, I know what I'm trying to say, but I don't know how to say it. But it was it was just yeah. sad to not see the women in the position that they should have been in for, what, a year yeah, and a half? Just a weird, um, a weird series of events that happened. They, there was the champion was stripped, and then the pandemic happened. So it was like there was no real chance to make a new champ. You couldn't be bringing in outside talent because the um, because of all the restrictions. Um, and for a while, they didn't even have live shows or or new shows that were going out. So it was just a weird series of events. But it was incredibly hard. It was incredibly hard for the women that worked so hard. You know, you got people like the Allure that are tremendous performers. I don't always get along with them, but they're <laughs> tremendous performers. So like 
for them not to be able to go out there and do what they love, it was tough on them. Yeah. And, um, you know, you got people like Sumi who wrestled her entire adult life. And again, she can't wrestle. And so it was tough for them too. And so however it was brought back, it needed to be brought back the right way. And I think that it was, I think we have a good jumping off point. Um, and now is when the girls can really shine. Yeah, and how how you, you mentioned obviously it's been tough for the women. It's been tough for everybody because of COVID, because of lockdowns and restrictions and all that kind of nonsense. But what um what's it been like? Obviously, you basically everywhere you've been, there's been crowds, huge crowds. You've been a part of WWE stadium tours and arenas and all that kind of stuff. And now, obviously, it's the complete opposite of that. What's it been like getting used to that? Is it is it something that you're you're used to yet? Uh, Ring of Honor hoping to bring fans back soon. So I'm used to it. Do I like it? No, I don't. Um, you know, it does give everybody an opportunity to just have their matches without any influence from outside um, chants or anything going on. Um, and so they are able to have their matches in that sense. Yeah. But I'm a performer and I, I do miss the crowd. I miss the people. I miss the feeling. I know for the women that took big bumps in some of those matches, the bumps hurt more, um, you know, landing on a concrete floor with nobody saying, Hey, get back up. Makes you think maybe <laughs> I should just stay down. Um, so that's tough. And I can't wait till we get back to having shows in front of people every single week. Um, and I, I'm not used to it, but I have learned to just say, you know what? The people are through the camera lens, and that is who I'm working towards. Yeah, yeah, they're still watching, they're still cheering, they're still booing. I, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate what you mean, though. It must be weird not having a, a crowd to feed off, a crowd to boo you, a crowd to cheer you. I want to know what they think. Am I making a match that they hate? <laughs> like, tell me. Just go on Twitter. Just go on Twitter. Twitter. They'll tell you. Well, you know what, though? Twitter Twitter's like fa a fake place. Twitter is one of those places that everyone seems very like all the time. And I'm like, no, I don't want her. I want like, hey, let's let's have a conversation. And with a crowd, you're having a conversation. And I like that because emotion, it, when you're when you're in a crowd watching a show, it's it's different. You, you can't help yourself but to go. Yeah. When something cool happens on Twitter. You could take a moment and go, nah, I'm really going to get them with this comment. And it's no fun. Yeah, it gives you too much time to analyze things, doesn't it? Rather than just enjoying <laughs> yes. the moment. Exactly. Yeah, and okay. I want people to have fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, so obviously we've talked a lot about what you're doing in Ring of Honor. You've done, honestly, an amazing job with the women. You can see the differences. You can see how they've really stepped it up a level. I would be remiss if I didn't get your thoughts on... What the hell is going on with the women in WWE at the moment? Obviously, your former employees, I'm sure you've probably got an opinion on what they've done with the uh, the Queen's Crown Tournament. I've been extremely vocal about it on Twitter. I've been dissecting it a lot. But to be fair, when you're seeing how many matches, six matches now, I think there's been throughout the tournament so far, and they've accumulated to about 15 minutes over mm -hmm. six matches. I think the shortest match was one minute, 38 seconds, which is, as far as I'm concerned, pathetic um abysmal and embarrassing it's, it's not obviously they're still pushing the the ladies at the top of the card your sasha banks becky lynch all the usual faces but uh, it feels like they're sort of leaving behind the women on the lower end of the card and that's not something that you've struggled with in ring of honor so how how have you managed to get that balance right and do we do we what uh, i haven't got the words to explain how disappointing yeah, it is you know, with oh. With what I've seen is they're giving a lot of time to their upper echelon talent. Um, and it's always been that way in wrestling. But um, what I've seen time and time again is when you don't have a strong undercard and a strong mid card, you go through these peaks and valleys. And um, that's tough. Like for me, there's... Uh, there's only a few different time limits in a match and um, none of them are under five minutes. No. And so like, I, I don't think it's enough. Um, sure. Of course, someone is going to blow through someone from time to time that that's just happened. Someone's just more prepared and ready to go. 
but it shouldn't happen too often. Um, and when it does, people get sad and they're not, they're not going to enjoy what they're watching because they feel bad for the girls. Yeah. Um, and that's not a good feeling bad. Like, oh my, the person I like is losing. That's a, are you kidding me? That, like, why, why are they only getting a couple minutes? And you don't want that reaction. Um, I know why WWE does it. They have their um, specific talent that is um, their upper echelon. They're the ones that are on the marquees. They're the ones that are getting the, um, the sponsorships and all of the deals. And they're the very best that they have. I get that. But it's also a building process. And it always should be a building process. Um, it's, it's a never-ending story in wrestling. Uh, TV shows, they've got, you know, usually they've got a beginning, middle, and end every time. Wrestling is just constant. So you're constantly building, you're constantly changing, and then you're, you're also nodding to the person that's next. Um, with a lot of the stuff that I do, there are links to what might happen, um, in stories and it's necessary because we are in a, in a world of wrestling that someone could get hurt or someone can't show up or someone signs somewhere else, or they have a kid or whatever it is. So there's always got to be these, what are the inner workings of, um, these wrestlers and what are their relationships? Um, we're all backstage together. It's not like we like, I don't know, disappear once we go through the curtain. We definitely have relationships with each other. And I like to show those bits and pieces, even if it's just a small second. Um, and, you know, I think in WWE, they don't have the time to do it um, because they they focus a lot on the upper echelon. I don't know if that answers your question. Um, yeah, yeah. it's just a different, it's just a different way of booking. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I, I understand completely. It's, um, I think that's what's so disappointing is, you know, a wrestler could have a 15, 20 year career, or they could have a two year career, depending on what happens. They could get, like you said, injured. Look at someone like Lacey Evans or Becky Lynch, both, both getting pregnant and both having kids. Um, if, if we can't get invested into these women who are suddenly thrust into those positions, let's say... Sasha Banks gets injured tonight. Liv Morgan gets pushed up in her place or somebody like that. Zelina Vega, the last time we saw her was a one minute, 50 second match. I'm not invested. I don't, uh, you know, it's, it, you know what I mean? It's not believable for that person to all of a sudden yep. be pushed to the moon when her last three matches added up to 10 minutes. Yeah. And it's, it's being able to see a little bit of the future too, which I think is so fun. Like I, I love it. I love looking out and looking at our entire division in Ring of Honor and going, okay, who could be put in that spot at any moment? And do we tease it? Do we play with it? Do we, um, do we show off a skill for someone by putting them in the ring with someone they've had a million matches with so people could show really how good that person is or how they can see that person? So it's it's being able to see the future a little bit and to book towards the future rather than book towards the past. Yeah. Um, I like to book towards the future because I always think of your veterans. They are the foundation of the entire company. Your veterans, they are solid as a rock. And then everyone else, I mean, you see rock. No, uh, Yes, P indie promotions knew rock, but now... Everybody knows her as the girl that came in and beat two Ring of Honor veterans. That's huge. And not only that, Rock is out there. She's competing every weekend. She's got a match. She had a match with Lainey Luck, who we've seen in the tournament um, already. So people knew that, you know, and Lainey just had um, won a match not too long ago before that. And so she was a viable competitor going into that match with Rock. Um, and then, you know, she, and, and then rock had a match with killer Kelly and that match was awesome. And she got all the streamers and it was like a welcome home of it. And so now she's becoming more and more of a viable, um, viable champ because you know her and you know, she's out there competing and no, I do not have the opportunity to have her in a title match every single week. But what I do have is thousands of independent wrestling companies that are willing to have a ring of honor championship match. 
And that is, that's important to me. That buzz of showing our champ out there and maybe she'll lose it at one of these independent shows and then I'll really be in trouble. But, you know, we, we have to show off our title. We have to get Roxy some reps. So by the next time she has a ring of honor title match, um, you're going to be like, okay, she's defended it five times. She's defended it six times, whatever it ends up being. And so she is a working champ. She's a fighting champ. Yeah. And I love what you say about looking for the future and looking to the future, looking across that ring of honor women's division, because it feels, I think because the championship was gone for such a long time and then things have really kind of catapulted and exploded recently, everybody feels really fresh and everybody mm -hmm. feels really new, almost like you've signed a whole new roster of women. So there are mm -hmm. genuinely dozens and dozens, however many of genuinely viable champions you could you could see any of those ladies holding the title at any point yeah. even just in the next six months and it would be it'd be fine it I mean, wouldn't willow feel like... just won her three-way match so willow yeah. just went her three-way match and now she has an opportunity with whoever wins the other three-way match she wins mm -hmm. that match she gets a title match at final battle and that's our biggest show of the year yes. so like yeah. that just catapults someone and does Willow deserve it? Of course she does. She just won a match last week. Um, she won a match the week before that. She's killing it on the indies. Like, yes, she she deserved it. She came back from a broken back. Like, this woman is incredible. And we're just <laughs> starting to see. And and she was um, she wrestled at uh, the Ring of Honor Dojo. So she's got history here. And who knows? She could win at Final Battle if she makes the steps to do it. Yeah, yeah, and she would deserve it. Like you say, superhuman coming back from a broken back. I can't think of many mm -hmm. people that would come back from a broken back. I would stay my ass at home. I'd be like, yes, I'm, I would. Done. I'm done. I'm, I'm all set. Thank yeah, you. I stubbed my toe and I'm like, I'm taking the day off work. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's. I want to go back to the, the very start of your career within wrestling. Like you said, 17 years ago, back in 2004, yep. when you were a part of that um, 2004 WWE Diva Search. Mm -hmm. What was what was your goal going into that? Did you did you want to be the next great women's champion, the next great women's wrestler, or did you sort of know? Obviously, WWE was a very different time back then, wasn't it? Didn't really care about the women. They certainly weren't positioned the way they are now. So, did you know what WWE would have had in store for you if you had have won, or did you know what they had in store when you signed? So, what I wanted to do was be a backstage interviewer. Um, I love Jonathan Coachman. I thought he was incredible. Like I loved his interactions with the rock and I just, I thought he added so much, um, to all of the guys at that time. So that's the job I wanted. Um, and that's the job that I thought I would hold for my entire career in WWE along the way, of course, um, they're like, Hey, so do you want to train? And uh, okay, I'll, I'll train. You know, I have a pretty high pain tolerance. I can figure this out and I get there and I about die. Um, but it was, uh, it's addictive. That adrenaline rush, that um, thinking you could win, um, crowd gets behind you. Um, and I lost a lot of matches, but uh, I also was in the ring with some incredible people. And uh, no, that wasn't necessarily the job that I applied for, but um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and during that time that you were in WWE for, it was quite a few years, wasn't it? I think you were there for, for quite a while. Five and a half. Yeah, yeah five was, and a half years. Quite a long time, like we said before. Some careers don't last even a few years. So five and a half years is quite a long time. Yeah. It was the what what sort of you must have picked up a lot of skills that you've taken with you elsewhere to impact to ring of honor to japan all the places that you've been and obviously the role that you're doing now is very creative and booking is there anybody that you maybe worked with over the years in wwe or impact that really helped to bring that side of you out because you wanted to be an interviewer and now yeah. all of a sudden you're you're a booker and you're working in creative and things like that uh-huh so, so i worked with um Heyman down at ohio valley wrestling um, and that's really the jumping off point of, um, my creativity and wanting to, uh, try and book and use, um, you know, use what I have in my mind of where things can go and how I view wrestling a little bit different than other people. 
Um, and so that was the beginning and just sitting with Heyman before shows and he's telling us what's going to happen throughout the night and, um, going over the scripts and everything, um, or fit formats, I guess we like to call them. Um, and so we were, uh, we would do that. And that was at the very early parts of my career. Um, but I was never afraid to ask questions or to just listen. And as an interviewer, I got to interview people like DX and I got to interview people like uh, Carlito and uh, like uh, Ric Flair and the entire gamut of individuals. I was able, like, I worked with The Rock. I worked with Stone Cold Steve Austin. I've worked with Kurt Angle. I've worked with Umaga. I I worked with everybody. So I didn't stand there and just go, oh, I'm going to turn my brain off. No, I listened. And, um, there is a skill to listening, <laughs> to listening and to be able to interpret and to remember and to use it moving forward. And, you know, even like uh, Triple H, I would stand at the curtain with him while he was telling me this match, blah, blah, blah. This match is, you know, should be working on this, this match, because I was interested in the product. I mean, John Cena, all of them, I listened to. Yeah. And, and that is that um, is quite a list of people to work with, isn't it? Yeah, and I consistently worked with these people. It wasn't like yeah. one off. I mean, yeah. it was Edge and Christian and Punk and um, Daniel Bryan and uh, Kevin Steen. I had like uh, either storylines with them or I was managing my husband while he was having matches with nice. Sammy and the Bucks. And so I've been around the ring or in the ring with probably Cody Rhodes, like the who's who of wrestling I have worked with or done storylines with. And so I didn't just stand there and not take it all in. I admire these people so much that I want to hear what they have to say. And if I can learn one thing from each one, I've got quite an arsenal behind me. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it doesn't get much better than Paul Heyman. If you're going to learn creative, booking, <laughs> listening, talking, interviewing, doesn't get better than Heyman, does it? No, and I mean, yeah. and I, I, and everyone knows, like, uh, that's been following wrestling for a long time. I dated Punk. And, I mean, that is one of the greatest minds in all of professional wrestling. And even though we dated for, like, a minute and, like, whatever, <laughs> but... I listened. He explained to me the direction that wrestling was going to go. And this was back in 2015, I think it was, maybe 16. And he's explaining to me the trajectory of wrestling. And then I watched it all happen. And like, that's insane to me. And, um, you know, so I, I don't know if that um that helped me along the way just to take all those snippets or if it's all you know as a whole but i've had some great teachers <laughs> yeah 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 and it's clear to see you 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 paid attention you learned well because like i say what you're doing in ring of honor now is fantastic you you're clearly applying it well <laughs> applying it how it should be applied um Right, another thing I want to ask about about your time in WWE, and I don't really know how to ask this question. It might be a bit of an awkward one. I don't know. Um, okay. I spoke to Mark Mero a few months ago, okay. um, and we spoke about Sable and the fact that she did Playboy. Um, obviously, you did a Playboy shoot while with WWE as well. And I'm, I've always been curious about that whole period of time where quite a few different female wrestlers went to Playboy. Uh -huh. Was that something that was sort of like an opportunity for you? Was it, was it something you asked to do, or was it like a a contractual thing did WWE not force but expect you guys to it was well, no I wanted to do it, it. um oh, I okay. I've been a Playboy fan for a long time um and long time ago Cindy Crawford had done a um did a shoot for Playboy it was black and white and I thought it was gorgeous and um love Kate Moss and I I came from the modeling world um, I was a bikini model that wanted to be a runway model, wanted to be an editorial model. So when it came time to do Playboy, I picked out everything. I picked out my shoes. I picked out um, belts that I wore. I picked out the style. Um, I wanted it to be black and white, but they didn't want black and white at the time. That wasn't what uh, Hugh Hefner was into um, at that time for the magazine. So that was fine. 
Um, but I loved it. It was an incredible experience. Um, I never felt um, like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. This is too sexy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I didn't feel like that. Um, I was an, I'm an actor. I play different roles. I've been the pregnant champ. I've been the sexy <laughs> one. I've been the ditz. I've been the, the boss lady. Um, I enjoy all of those roles. I was the bitch when I was in Impact. My grandmother used to be like, why are you so mean to Allie? And I'm like, I I'm just, she, and she loves to just watch wrestling and believe it all. And I was like, okay, I just, I don't know. I get a bad attitude in Florida. Um, so like, I, I never looked at it that way. Um, did, did I love everything I did when I was in WWE, like the sexy stuff? No, I hated when the ring was wet and we had to do like the, oh, the wet and wild wrestling match. And I'm like, I'm going to slip and fall. Like, I hated that. Um, you always were concerned that something was going to fall out, which whatever, <laughs> like I did Playboy. So I, that stuff, um, that didn't bother me. Did I hope for more? Yes. Did I want more well-rounded characters? Of course I did. And I, I got a little bit of that when I was in WWE, the Playboy storyline where me and all the women came out was like, no, I'm doing the, I'm doing Playboy. And I want, and all of us women came together. That was one of the beginning mo moments where things started to change. Um, and I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm proud that we were able to start something that has turned out the way that it has now. I mean, there are so many women wrestlers out there doing incredible things. Yeah, I think with the whole Playboy thing, people have got this, just the wrong idea about Playboy, don't they? That it's just sordid yeah. or filth. But it's actually, actually quite a classy thing to do, isn't it? It's not done in yeah. a really dirty, filthy way. It's just young boys saw Playboy and thought, hey, boobs. Yeah, I mean, and it. it it's something that now I I look back on with pride. I worked really hard to get in shape for the magazine. <laughs> I worked really hard to be able to be in a position that they wanted me to be the cover. I mean, that year, um, my issue came out in April. Kim Kardashian's came out in December and I sold more copies than she did. Oh, so wow. like, and that was, it was way back when, Kim Kardashian was just starting to get steam behind her. And so I, I take pride in that part of my life. I mean, I did Playboy and then I went on to do Celebrity Apprentice. Um, and, you know, I did really well on Celebrity Apprentice, made millions of dollars for charity for the Holly Rod Foundation. Like, so um, I'm really proud of that time in my life. And I feel like I came out on the other end even stronger because I could say, okay, I did that. And now I'm doing the job that I am now. And it doesn't matter how sexy you are at certain times of the day, you could still have a job and still be a businesswoman. Um, there are women making killings at different places, doing sexy photos. Let me just tell you, there is a lot of planning that goes into things like OnlyFans and Patreon and Twitch and all these things. Yes, we get all dressed up and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, that's that's very small portion of the business women that are behind these things. Hmm, fair enough. It's, it's just really interesting to hear that side of things because like I said, you think of Playboy and you think it's just naked women, but it, it sounds like there's a lot more to it. Um, you mentioned Celebrity Apprentice and I was keen to ask you about that What's Donald Trump really like? Is he <laughs> is he the character that we see on TV or in the news? Is he is he that bad, or is, is he actually sort of like an, an all right kind of guy behind the cameras? So, um, I have been doing a very good job of not getting too political or too negative about things. I will say this: um, Donald Trump was great on Celebrity Apprentice. He's a character. He was funny on The Apprentice. Um, does he belong as the president? No, I don't want to think about my president every day. Every day. I just don't. I want, you know, the president to be doing his job in the White House and me to only think about him every couple of weeks. Like, oh, OK, infrastructure. Great. We need new roads. Like, I don't want to be thinking about this man every day. Like there that is that's a problem. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I want it to just work. 
um, I think he was too much of a celebrity in that uh, role. Um, there are certain things we need a little bit more seriousness to. Whether or not my water is clean is important to me. Whether or not the school systems are good, important to me. Um, I don't want to overanalyze someone that uh, has taken the English language as just like, ah, maybe you want to spell things a certain way. Um, I- I'd like it to be a little bit more serious than that. Yes. Um, let us entertain you. Let that be the president. <laughs> did you uh, um, Did you have much interaction with him when he, because he was in obviously WWE briefly, wasn't he as well? Um, yes, the whole of the I did. Movie. Did you come across him? What was he like? In, would, would that have been your first time meeting him, interacting with him? Yes. Um, so I asked him to be on Celebrity Apprentice because um, he was coming in and doing the whole billionaire versus billionaire thing. Um, and you know, it's just a little bit of a, um, yeah, uh, old man. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. You pat him on the head and be like, okay, here we go. <laughs> like, I, uh, whatever it's, um, uh, yeah, I, it, if I'm being honest, he just never, he never belonged in the, uh, in the presidential campaigns. He just didn't. Um, did I have a good interaction with him at WWE? I had a very minor interaction with him. I walked him to the ring. Um, like I've done a million times with a million different people. So it was just my job that night. It wasn't a big deal. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Fair enough. Even, even I can say that he didn't belong in the office and I'm from the UK. And our, yeah. our, our political scene's a bit of a mess. And even I yeah. know that, you know, that was a, a bit of a weird decision. We over here, the other side of the pond, we were all like, really? Don't, yeah. That's Donald and Trump. I got a lot of that. Yeah. I, I got a lot of the, um, really? <laughs> and that's not good. Like, no. the president should be the president, do your job, and I will hear about you every couple of weeks when I need a bill passed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I think we focused on WWE a bit too much. So let's bring it back to Ring of Honor. Um, What's next then for the women in Ring of Honor? Is there anything that you've got on the immediate horizon? Any more plans? I... The first thing I thought when the tournament finished was, I want to see this tournament again. So are there plans for it to happen again in the future? Maybe be an annual sort of thing? So we're looking into that. Um, some of like the um, like long-term goals are to definitely get tag titles. Um, yes. I think that's really yeah. important. There's so many great women's tag teams out there. Um, so that's one of my goals. We do have a title match, a final battle. Um, it's going to be whoever is the champ <clears throat> against whoever wins uh, these two three-way matches. They have a match against each other, and whoever wins that is going to have a match at final battle. So um, we do have that title match at final battle. That's really exciting. Um, we've uh, There's been some interaction between the Allure and the Hex. So um, I don't know if this is breaking news, and I don't know if, when this uh, podcast is coming out. But um, I do have to say, I'm going to have to have a conversation with Mickey and um, see if maybe um, there should be an opportunity for them to have a match. Because um, if the Allure is getting involved with Chelsea and Chelsea is close with the Hex, um, you know, it only seems necessary that, um, you know, we we might have a tag, tag team title match on our hands. Um, so, you know, I'm going to uh, put in a call to Mickey over at NWA and see if we can make that happen. But, um, so those are the main things. Women's division Wednesday. I think we are on week 24 right now of an all women show every single Wednesday night at 7 PM Eastern, um, beyond the bells, which is our like after show. It's a talk show about women's wrestling, not just ring of honor, but what women's wrestling in general. Um, so we've had, uh, I think 24 weeks of that right now. Um, people say all women's wrestling shows don't work. It's been working for 24 weeks now. (laughs) So, I mean, um, so we do have that as well. And, um, so I'm very excited about those. So the biggest thing, title match, a final battle, possible NWA tag team title match. 
and, um, you know, and just our wrestlers are really starting to build up their careers. Yeah, absolutely. And like, there's been, there's been a lot of talk quite mm-hmm. recently. I actually spoke to, um, Lefisto, one of your colleagues okay. about it. Yeah. And she, um, she was brilliant. Um, we, we spoke about the, the idea, I think at the time, a few months ago, there was a lot of talk about maybe WWE starting up an all women's show. Would that be viable? Would the women appear on SmackDown and Raw as well? What would you do with the titles? Would it make money? It seems to be doing pretty well in Ring of Honor, though, doesn't it? Like you said, like this is this is proof that it can work. Yeah. Well, we have to stop looking at it like um, some kind of sideshow. Like yeah. it's not a sideshow; yeah. it's just a show. Like yeah. the, there's you can turn on the TV and you can go, oh, there's a drama, and there's a um, the horror, there's a this, there's a this. Like there's a kids show. There. Okay, this is just another style of show. Yeah. Um, and we got to stop treating it like a sideshow. No, this is a viable show that we're building characters that women have real stakes and the stakes are winning a title or proving that they deserve respect or honor because this is Ring of Honor. Um, so those are the main elements of Ring of Honor and of a woman's show. And that's what we're doing. Um, the men do it. Um, and if we don't look at it like a sideshow and just say, okay, what is it that men's wrestling has been doing for all these years? Okay. Let's implement some of that into a women's wrestling show, but then also let's create round characters, not just, okay, you are the sexy one. You are the, this, you are the, this, you are the technical. No, there is a thousand different elements of every single male wrestler. And there will be a thousand different elements of every single female wrestler. Um, it's possible it's just it's effort and time yeah yeah that's that's exactly it it's time and like you said earlier i don't think other promotions as in wwe don't really seem to have the time for that um Mm -hmm. how about AEW though because Mm -hmm. i'm I'm always really really keen to get especially when i when i talk to women's wrestlers or, or women from within the business what they think about what's happening in AEW with the women's division there because they've been going for pretty much two years now yeah two years this month actually um there's been a lot of criticism about the women. I know things are starting to get a little bit better and they've had main events and things like that, but it's not exactly been booked particularly well, has it? It's probably still been booked better than WWE, but there, mm-hmm. it, it seems to get a lot more criticism than WWE. Would would you ever consider, you know, you you and Mike could have gone to AEW, but you chose to go to, to Ring of Honor. Would you ever consider going there to maybe do a similar job to what you're doing now, but with the women in AEW? Um, so I don't limit myself to any, you know, one thing. So you never know there's, um, there's opportunities that come up all the time. And, um, you know, my, my time in ring of honor has been wonderful. And I hope that I can stay here for the rest of my career. But, you know, as I've seen, (laughs) things are always changing. You know, I've been ring of honor and WWE and NWA and I, um, they're not NWA, but, uh, new Japan. And I've been all these different places and um so you never know what could happen um would i love to work with the talented women over there of course i would i mean i love my division over here i love their division as well i think they have a very strong division that just needs time um right now i feel like it's um firecrackers with the women's division you know you have a match like uh the uh, Thunder Rosa against Brit, and it's like, yeah. it's like pan and pow. You've got this big match, and it's awesome. And then it's like, okay, where is it going? And then you've got this match with Ruby in Alley, and it's like pan. And you know, you, so you have these moments, and it, it sometime they're gonna settle. And um, it's when you get into that settling phase that it's like, okay, what are our real characters? Who are they really yeah. building? And um, I'm interested to see it. I think that the girls over there are tremendous. Um, I've talked to a few of them. Um, I really feel like uh, the Ruby and Allie's match was a moment in time that will be remembered forever just because it got such good ratings yeah. Um, yeah. competing against you know what was going on at WWE. So it's like they need to build off of that. Um, and I think if there was ever a time to start building the women's division, it would be now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they didn't just go up against WWE. They went up against WWE with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar in that same spot. Yeah. 
that's pretty yeah. big. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, very, I very tall. like I was so excited for them. I was like, I, I uh, texted both of them. I was like, oh my god, like it, it's so cool to be in those moments. And like, I have an appreciation for all wrestlers out there, um, especially the women's wrestlers. And I, I have connections with a lot of them. I've worked with a ton of them. So like, whenever they're doing something great, I don't care what company it is. I'll text them and be like, this is awesome. You know, like. Why not? We should all be empowering each other to be better. Yeah, yeah, I hear stuff like that all the time. People, people are so determined that everybody hates each other in other companies, and WWE and AEW are at war, but they're not. I've I've seen stories about about guys within companies texting each other. I know Cody Rhodes is considering Kevin Owens to be the godfather of of his and Brandy's baby. These people are not friends. They respect each other. They've helped each other. They've always got each other's backs. It's insane to me. It's just. It's another social media thing, isn't it? People have to. Yeah, I mean, it's a conversation that people can have. It's an argument that people can have. And like, I love the stuff Becky's doing. I admire her so much. It makes me work harder in the gym because she looks so fantastic. Like she is a badass mom that's inspirational to everyone. And so I'll watch what she's doing. I love what Sasha's doing. Um, I think that Charlotte is tremendous. Like, so I will watch them just as much as I will watch Brit and I will watch Thunder and I will, and of course, Serena and I watch all of them. And then I'll turn, I, I watch a lot of women's wrestling. Sorry, dudes. I, I don't have time for the guys, to, but like I'll turn on impact and be like, okay. And then I, I watch the empower special. Like, so I will watch women from any company. And if I see something I love, I send them a text and I'm like, you're amazing. Like, why not? It makes them feel good. It makes me feel good because I was able to watch them have, you know, a great match. So yeah, I, and we're all so much more connected than people think. Like we all talk like every company and like talent from every company talks to someone from every other company. Yeah. It's good to hear. It's good to hear. It just, I, I hope when people like listen to this or watch this episode they just get it through to their heads like yeah everybody can just be friends we don't always need to hate we don't always <laughs> need to attack each other for liking other things or yeah uh, let the know, company I've... do that they can they can have their yeah. their competition you know go head to head they can you know yeah. my cup is the best like of course and you should have pride like i have a ton yeah. of pride for ring of honor i love ring of honor but i don't hate everybody else crazy Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Um, Maria, you have been a fantastic guest. This is why I wanted to talk to you for such a long time. Honestly, like I said, you were right at the top of my list. Somebody that I did not grew up watching, but at that period when I was really into wrestling, you were, you were pretty much a mainstay of WWE. Um, you've been a fantastic interview, but I want to end by asking you the same question that I ask all of my guests, but I'd sort of like tailor it to them and their experiences and things like that. So who would be on your Mount Rushmore of women's wrestlers? I don't know how much of a fan you were before getting into the business. Mm -hmm. So do you want wrestlers from now or do you want wrestlers? All time. All time. All time. It can be a mix. Oh. Any company. All time. Makes it a bit harder. That way. It does make it so much harder. Okay. <laughs> um, so I would say Lita. Um, would definitely be um, high up on that list. Um, Scary Sherry. Um, I would say uh, Kill em, Gill em. Um, And then currently Becky. So I yeah. think I've hit like, you know, generationally. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so those would be the four. Uh, that, currently. That's a but wonderful it changes, list. It changes all the time. So um, <laughs> But yeah, but there's some really good women out there right now. It's it's going to be an interesting few years coming up here. Yeah, yeah. Even if you did a Mount Rushmore of current women's wrestlers, it would it would hold up against any all time. Oh yeah, for women. sure. I mean, and if you did if you did current um, Becky, I would put Diana on there. I'd put Rock yeah, on there. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ugh, I mean, you'd have to put uh, Brit on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's the uh, most over uh, woman in, in the industry. You'd have to put uh, Trish on there. You'd have to, like, I. yeah, there's too many. Uh, uh, Trisha Dora. Um, I don't know if you know her, but oh my God. Yeah, incredible. yeah. Incredible. 
Um, yeah, there's a lot you would put on there. You just and need to I start carving new faces. Serena, in the, in the you would put on there. Um, yeah, no, Kira Hogan. Um, you just have to keep going down the line because, like, <laughs> and then I'm sure I'm missing someone, and now everybody's gonna be like, I can't believe you forgot so and so. And I'm gonna be like, I got a mom brain, I've had two kids, and yeah, no. Breaking news Maria Canellis hates Sasha Banks. <laughs> That's no. what it's gonna be. That'll be on Twitter. No, I'm trying Twitter. to think like someone from everywhere, but <laughs> you know, it, you can't. It's it's too hard. It's impossible. There's no right or wrong answer. It's subjective, <laughs> isn't it? That's what wrestling is. It's subjective. Yes, it's and it's subjective to your mood. What are you in the mood for at that yeah. moment? Yeah. Do you want to see hard hitting, and then you choose Lufisto and Ali Catch? Do you want to? Do you want to see um, luchadors, and then you're going to choose Miranda because she's the very best luchador out there? Do you want to see technical wrestling, and now you're getting into Deanna Rock and Trish? Like, yeah, it's yeah. tough, very, very tough. Yeah, but that's a good thing, isn't it? There's something for everybody. There's a lot yeah. of great women out there. People just yeah. need to get behind women's wrestling more and more and more as much as they can because it really yeah, is everything. so underrated, so underrated. So yeah, Maria, that was um, that was fantastic. Like I said, thank you so much for joining me. Before I let you go, though, where can everybody find you on social media? Is there anything you'd like to push? Anything in Ring of Honor? Any channels okay. or anything like that? Yeah, so um, Maria L. Canellis on um, Twitter, um, Maria Canellis on Instagram. I have a Patreon. I have a Facebook, which is official Maria Canellis. Thinking about starting a Twitch. Um, I've got okay. the name for it. It's the First Lady Maria. Um, I also, uh, I do Beyond the Bells and that's on Wednesdays. We're doing it about once a month right now, but we have Women's Division Wednesday, which is every single Wednesday on the Ring of Honor YouTube. Um, and yeah, we just watch Ring of Honor. Um, <laughs> but the local listings, it's on the Sinclair Broadcasting Systems. You can also watch it on Fight TV, become an Honor Club member. Um, I could keep talking. I, I, I talk now, so um, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Maria. Everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Like I said at the start, hit subscribe, hit follow, wherever it is that you're getting this. You know where to find me. Hit up the link tree. Everything's on there, all the social medias and that. Yeah. And until next time, guys, thank you and take care. Thank you. Thank you.